Hey folks, and welcome to another amazing episode of North of Chaos. I am, of course, your amazing host, James Wolfe. And today, you're in for a real treat. I got a good buddy of mine on the show. His name is John Pesciuto. He's an amazing photographer, great friend. He's got a podcast himself that I've been on a few times, and it's just a real treat to have him on. You know, we talked about a lot of things, really the juice behind this creative hero's journey that we're all on, right? Getting out of this duality of success and failure. What's that feeling that we're really all searching for? And a lot of other really deep things that I don't think are really talked about all that much out there. So before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to the channel or hit the follow button if you're on and listening somewhere else. Um, yeah, you don't want to ever miss anything. So without further ado, let's get with it. Mr. John. Side to it is that like I find myself feeling a level of gratitude that comes to me very easily these days. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how to articulate the why, but I think it's an age thing. Like I, I just, yeah. I feel like as I get older, I have a lot more appreciation for things that I would have, you know, considered taking significant advantage of you know even yeah. five years ago so yeah. for me it comes at such a alarmingly ease like that i don't find myself questioning it or wondering or pondering about it because it just comes yeah. to me at this point in my life effortlessly okay well you know since you say that and i know a little bit about you know your past year and a half or so and i've noticed with you there's been a total upswing in like general positivity but I also know it's yeah. because you're doing the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I got, and that just totally ties into kind of what I was thinking about it. Because it's not that I'm trying to define it. It's that I want to understand and like harmonize with that. So it, it I can lean into it more easily when it happens. Mm -hmm. And I kind of realized that's it. When you're in this kind of flow of doing what, you know, your soul wants to do. And you're not feeling a bunch of resistance. And you're not, you know batter ramming your head against a wall trying to figure out what you want to do and where to go you're just automatically more receptive to this kind of like natural connection with everything and i think mm -hmm. that's maybe what that gratefulness is it's just yeah. like an emotional resonance with this currency and this current maybe definitely yeah i yeah. totally agree i yeah. think it's one of those things where like uh you know, I, I, I've had a chaotic life. Like there have been, you know, multitudes of ups and downs. And sure. uh, I've sort of reached like the peak of my inner understanding of myself. Mm -hmm. So when I've reached this flow state, whatever you want to call it, of like I'm just firing on all cylinders and like things are coming my way and opportunities and work and personal life and just like yeah uh, the abundance that i dreamt of three years ago has manifested itself now in in a million different ways and ways i could have never even dreamed of it just it's a really nice feeling to sort of have the universe sort of like reward you for everything that i've been putting out and trying to do and and uh it's a nice feeling for sure i mean there are good days and bad days of course um yeah, but it's it's one of yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like I, I've reached sort of a very comfortable state in my skin, and I think that has permeated across every avenue of everything that I try to touch and do. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, is it? Do you think doing your podcast? Because I'm, you know, about a, a minute behind you on that. Did that kind of bring? It's bringing me so much, like personal clarity on a lot of things, and it's, you know, my my whole shtick. If I had to have, if I had to have a shtick, is to just be like the most authentic version of yourself in every aspect of your life. Like just wholeheartedly commit to whatever it is that you're doing. And like, that's where you'll find the golden nuggets of whoever the hell you are. And this mm -hmm. pod, you know, just having the raw conversations with people, you know, I said it on Instagram yeah, to you yesterday and it was kind of like, yeah, like I'm just finding this authentic authenticity and this dance between people to be so rewarding in itself. And I, I tend not to even care what people are doing. Everyone's doing something. Everyone's like doing mm -hmm. something cool. You know, everyone's on their own little, you know, side quest and hero's journey trying to figure out who they are. But I'm just like, what about you? Like what's going on underneath all that? And that kind of dance yeah. is really cool. There's a, there's a good book I read. I think it's called Steal Like an Artist. And the author <sighs> sort of says like, everyone is sort of like some sort of derivative of each other in some yeah. artistic sense. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. 
uh, I take that wholeheartedly when it comes to my podcast because there are so much commonalities amongst human beings, but we spend all of our time focusing on the things that break us apart and, and separate us. Yeah. And what I've found through doing my own podcast is that everyone suffers, everyone wins, everyone loses. And it's how I'm able to relate to those experiences that puts my yeah. own positives and negatives into the necessary perspective. And it's one of those things that like through doing the podcast, meeting a million people, having a million conversations that it just makes you feel more okay with your own shit, right? Like yeah, yeah. I know what other people have gone through is not the same things that I've gone through. I've had different successes than you've had. You've had different successes than I've had, but we all relate to how we like attribute those instances in our lives, both positively and negatively. And sure. it's through those conversations that just like reaffirm that everything I'm feeling and experiencing is normal, even though it is like in some ways exclusive to me, but it's the same. It's just different for different people. And yeah. That's like a really uh, reassuring feeling I've yeah. found. I mean, you have your own flavor of the same algorithmic process that everyone, like we're, humanity is not some great mystery. Like we all mm -hmm. are cut from the same cloth and we just all have a slightly different shade of experience within the same experiences. And I guess that's mm -hmm. what makes us both, you know, uniquely different, but able to resonate with each other. Like if it was too different, yeah. then we'd just be, you know, like aliens trying to figure each other out. But there's just <laughs> yeah. enough closeness for me to be like, John, I get you, dude. I know what you're going yeah. through. Even though I've never gone through what you are going through, I know what you're yeah. going through. So, and that's mm -hmm. a, that's a cool thing. And these conversations that I have, you know, I'm curious what those things are, right? Because it's like with Instagram, with all this shit, everyone has no problem showing their little highlight of what they're going through. And it's like, cool. You know, like that's a really great, you know, little, little iceberg cap, but what's this monster underneath, you know, like what got you there? What was that journey yeah. like? So yeah, man, this is, it's been a very cool little adventure. Something that honestly is just for me, you know, I have these conversations with you and with people all the time and it's like, all right, just, let's just record them. You know, someone's yeah. going to resonate with it. Someone's going to, you know, get something from it and, um, you know, yeah, it's good. I think when you like, so I started a podcast for a wholly altruistic thing. Like you said, it's just for yeah. me. Like it yeah. wasn't for, I'm not trying to be famous. I'm not trying to be rich. If that is a byproduct of me doing hundreds of episodes, great. I'm not going to yeah, say right? no to it, right, but it's right. not why I started it. I started it because it was, it was almost like a therapy session for me. 100%. Right. It was like me being able to listen to other people's lives and relate it to myself. And I really did steal from those conversations. Like it made me feel great about myself. It made me feel wholly <laughs> normal. I'm serious. Right. No, it I did. believe you. I believe it. Yeah. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the mirror. I had this conversation mm -hmm. with, with, you know, a good friend of mine, Sandra, yesterday. And yeah, man, we're all just mirrors and reflections of what we're already going through. And, you know, when you were telling me, and I, I said this to my buddy Gino, I was like, bro, I judge you from time to time. I do. Because the things that you are comfortable doing and that you're so good at are things I wish I were better at. And, you know, these kind of intimate conversations really also bring those things to the fore a lot faster. And, you know, you just can't. You can't ignore them. You can't ignore them. Mm -hmm. So that's a, it's a, it is a therapy session for everyone. Yeah. I'm a verbal processor. I've always been. So just doing these things is great. You know, I would do these. I would do this every day if I could. Uh, I would do same. one every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. it really is therapy. Like I like, it's it's just getting to the understanding that we're all the same, even though like we really try to spend so much time differentiating one another from each other. But yeah, we all deal with the same bullshit on a daily basis it's true. it's true and i would tell everyone you know, to do to do a podcast just for that sole yeah. reason yeah I, think, yeah I think i read that somewhere like some rich asshole was like everyone should start a podcast even if no one watches <laughs> I think it, it was Gary just v, two actually. one did he say it? i mean it probably was him, i think you know? so next to yeah. going to start you know a freaking garage sale every other day start a podcast yeah. too yeah whatever it is man whatever it is so you yeah. shot a big you, you shot a big show a couple days ago i've i've never done that and I yeah. was curious, I, I was asking myself, I should have just asked you, I don't know why I didn't, but you know, here we are having conversations. It's a good time to ask. What did you, like, what was the expectation like going into shooting something like that versus, you know, okay. just doing these more intimate one-on-one? -on -one? What was there a difference, A? Yeah, so okay, cool. uh, I was fortunate enough to be asked to shoot like a behind the scenes for the Adore Me show this week in, in New York Fashion Week, which 
for better or for worse, you can call it Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret owns them. Victoria's Secret doesn't really do fashion shows anymore. Yeah. Um, and it was like just next level opportunity for me. You know, I'm only three years into my photography career, and to get an opportunity like this was just beyond any sort of expectations which was or the ideas. only reason i was okay with you not doing <laughs> our scheduled podcast episode yeah. and I, Dude, I didn't I, even I, not even for a moment was that was i like what a f douche not even i a mean moment. i i got the call at like 9 a.m and i yeah, was yeah, like yeah. uh yeah no I, I mean i'm gonna say no to this i was like yeah of course i'm free you know what i mean yeah, and yeah i was like obviously. sorry james <laughs> no please just um, throw me to the curb and just just pick me back up later that's all that's yeah. all i ask uh to be fair you're very understanding you're like Fuck yeah that's awesome like go do it that's sweet cool um cool. so a couple things that i noticed i was like nerdly slightly emotional going to the shoot because i was like this is such a huge moment in my career and it's not like it was my best paying job or it's not like it was like the biggest exposure paid, i've ever had uh yeah i'm not what i should have but yeah you know i mean it's yeah, not yeah. it's not yeah you know you know how it is fashion week, i do but I, I do it's bullshit. yeah um so yeah uh so it's like it was like one of those things i was like this is like sort of like a pinch me moment and I was like on the train. I was texting my brother. I was like, "Dude, this is so wild! Like, I'm gonna do something that like I was dreaming about doing three years ago," mm -hmm. and like t I take the monetary aspect out of everything in in, in my career because it's I am doing move. the thing. Yeah, it's, I'm doing the thing that I like. I love most of this world, and that's making a living with a camera in my hand. And I don't judge each instance based on how much money I make. I know the money's there. It's not. It's not the reason why I do the thing. Um, yeah. And I was like texting my brother. I was like, man, this is like something that I was really envisioning for myself three years ago. And I'm like on my way to go do it. And it was like this like weirdly emotional situation. Um, how it matched up to expectations was it was simultaneously so much more than I could have expected. And then also exactly what I expected. Um, I'd never shot a fashion Whatever show before. Whatever that means. <laughs> it was Thank everything you. that I could have could it's everything that I could have thought and then it was also not break at all that, that I would have break expected. That the down, please. So it was one of those things where like it was chaos, like complete yeah. and utter yeah. chaos. I had never shot a fashion show before. I mean, I, I've seen them on television. You know what you would expect behind the scenes of like a major show like that. Yeah. And it was all of that ratcheted up a hundred, right? It was Damn. it was chaos. I was I was there for a long time before the show. I think I got there at two, and the show went on at like seven or eight. So I was there for like four or five hours before the show actually went on. Wow! Um, and it was awesome. I I mean, you know, I had unfettered access to behind the scenes to shoot the models getting ready. Uh, you know, the the test walk that they did in the afternoon. That's and cool. It's one of those things where, like, I sort of found the thing that I now know is going to be my niche, right? You know, so many times people have been asking me, like, oh, like, what kind of photography do you do? Like, what, what, you know, I say, like, oh, I do fashion and I do music. But, like, I think my answer now is I'm just, like, a straight documentary photographer because Ooh, when I okay. got my images back from the shoot, I realized that I'm just documenting people and, and their lives. Whether I'm shooting street photography, whether I'm shooting this behind the scenes yeah. uh, at this fashion show. Um the my best photos are like those in between moments where someone's getting some eyeliner put on or their makeup adjusted or their hair tis, you know yeah jazzed up or it's whatever like the intimate moments the intimate moments yeah. man yeah. yeah so it was awesome I, I mean listen it was it was insane I, I think my you know my rings on my Apple Watch were like you know twice circled over you know yeah. it was it was intense it was amazing it was chaotic i probably lost 10 liters of water just sweating it was so Damn. hot it's um, non-stop movement you're just running around like a crazy person yeah, yeah yeah i also was like a psychopath i shot on like three different cameras so like i didn't need to do that i just did it to myself because i'm a glutton for punishment um, i love it but yeah I man it. it was there were there were so many layers to it it was like uh everything i wanted it was uh, a really awesome reaffirmation of all that i've been working for um, and it's just like the next step and the next evolution of my career. I, I've got another big shoot this weekend coming up. That is another sort of like, wow, can't believe I'm doing this kind of situation. And yeah, yeah, man, it just, it's nice when all of the hard work that I've put into building this career from literally zero is now paving itself like forward and I could That's see great, where where it's going yeah that's super great that's super great it's i'm, I'm taking a totally different path i'm like leaving photography almost it's kind of yeah. weird yeah and i don't love that you know what i mean i don't it love feels, it either 
I don't know. I if mean, I'm when I first it. started, I mean, I don't know if you remember when I first started. Like Rick introduced us because I just like happened to like I don't know how I came across your page and I was like, how do you know this guy? He's like, well, it's my cousin. I was like, what the? Fuck? Yeah. And I was like, and I was just so enamored by your work. You're it's beautiful and breathtaking, and it does bum me out a little bit that you're like. I, I mean, I think people go through. You know, it's, those I, kind I've, of I've always I've done it. I've done it. And I think I even coming back to it in the last couple of years was me even trying to force something to start up again um, in, a, in a way that's like beyond a hobby. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm not like I, I think it's just always, you know, I might I might use it for this this brand that I'm launching. I might, you know, I would love to do coffee table book one day. Like I would love to do it as yeah. personal projects, which is kind of what it always was for me. Yeah. And I don't want it to be a job like you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, bless up, dude. I'm so glad, you know, that that's presenting itself to you in that way. And it, and, and it, I guess it maybe did for me a few times, but I just didn't, I didn't hop on board that train. And I never yeah. did the things one must do to mm -hmm. do that. And, I get you know, that. I got, yeah, I got a, a good friend, Raphael. Um, I, don't, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name, but if anyone follows me on Instagram, you know, you, I, I did a shoot with him. And he's a, an amazing photographer. And, you know, he shoots a lot of similar, like he just, he's enamored with the physical form and the natural world. Like I, you know, mm -hmm. that's probably the one thing he and I have in common in our shooting styles. And he is just full on diving in. And I mm -hmm. look at him, I'm like, damn dude, it's coming to him really easily. He's not getting a shadow ban like crazy on Instagram. And you know, he's just doing, sh and he's such a hustler. He and his, he and his uh, I think they're married now, but his partner, Dude, they're just like this duo and they're just getting after it. I think he's in Iceland right now doing a couple of shoots and he's just, you know, he's savvy with it on the business side. You know, he offers little little partnership, you know, connections for brands when he's overseas and it's, you know, he's really got it down and I didn't ever mm -hmm. do any of that shit. And, you yeah. know, I, it's just not supposed to be my path, I guess. And I'm totally fine no, with that. I, listen, I get all of that. I think there's like two things because like there's there are a few instances where the job feels like a job and less like the sure. thing that I know I love. Yeah. Um, personal projects will always outweigh like my working an event that I don't want to be at right, right. for a paycheck. Right. So right. I get that. Um, I, I've been lucky that I, I think I've been just doing it for such a short period of time that I haven't like fallen fully out of love with it, but there is like weeks at a time where I just like don't want to do it. Right. I don't want right. to shoot anything personally or commercially. I just yeah. want to, like, I'm just not feeling it. And, like, a lot of times it takes collaborating with other people to, like, suck me out of that. Like, my my creativity yeah. is lacking. My my inspirations disappeared. I need someone else to, like, hit me with, like, a really cool concept for a shoot that will, like, you know, re-energize me. Do people me to... go to you with that? Or are you usually – I've I've always had – people will be like, let's shoot. And that's all – that's literally the only part they'll offer. And then I literally have to be like, <laughs> okay, let me access my – genius and come up with a whole shoot for you and i'm you know i'm just like nah man you know it has, yeah it's not fun anymore i don't love so that. for me i found personally that like my best work happens on a collaborative basis so yeah i am always down to work with someone who's like i like your work i like what you can produce let's work together cool but i think what we create together needs to be collaborative it needs to be sure. a concept driven by the two of us like i have this idea you have this idea let's merge them together and make one thing um, it's hard for me to be super inspired when there is nothing coming from the other side, right? Yeah. So if I'm shooting with someone or they want to shoot with me and they don't have any sort of inspiration or any sort of mood board uh, input to the thing, it feels too much of my own. And I think yeah. when you're making art, and I know that sounds douchey, but when you're making art, it needs to be collaborative. There needs to be a, a team process on it. Um, at least for Dude, me, there, to there like... is nothing douchey about that. I mean, yeah. every every time I hear that, you know, we've talked about it. I think about it all the time. This this obvious concept in the natural world, it just ebbs and flows between reception and participation. Like there is mm -hmm. no overly dominant side. It is always yeah. this equal game, constantly going. And you know, even with that inspiration part, you can't force inspiration. And that's yeah. something I've had to really be okay with. You know what I mean? It's like I'll go peer. You know, when I was first got really good with the camera and then, you know, I would not want to shoot at all for a while and be like, what the f you know, like I, I thought this is supposed to be pouring out of me all the time. Right. I didn't think there would be, you know, a moment where I'm not wanting to do this. And, you know, when you, when you run that, that loop a couple of times and then you come back to it, you know, really energized, whatever, you have to give yourself some time to like chill and like totally. receive life a little bit. You know, you're not, you can't just always be blah, 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 blah. 
you gotta oh i totally agree yeah i mean <laughs> I, I, I mean it could be that i'm just older now but i find that inspiration comes and goes right like there are times where like i want to be shooting non-stop and there are other times totally. where i'm like i can i don't care when my next shoot is like i'm, I'm just good. an awareness that thing, is, dude yeah yeah you, you're you're like yeah with age i guess comes some awareness i wish these mm-hmm. are things i could have known when i was 18 but i'm you know whatever yeah. that uh, would be <laughs> why would i what would i be doing at 18 with that knowledge you know you're supposed yeah. to be this idiot you know just chasing and chasing and chasing but uh yeah my my dad used to always say this thing uh the chased run if i ever hmm. like do a little tribute to my dad he's has he has all these little sayings that i say now my dad, he's a complicated cat. He's a very old school, masculine dude. And he's probably one of the most spiritual men I've ever met that has no idea what spirituality is. Because he's got these like deep philosophies that are just so you know reminiscent of like Eastern religion, but he just has no freaking clue. And he always used to say that. He would print it out on a piece of paper and put it around the house. The chased run. And the whole premise behind that is, if you're always chasing, it usually is a company with some like weird, desperate energy of force and control. And that thing that you were chasing tends to run away from you, right? There has to be this, this, you know, this give and take and you have to, you know, and then he would say this other thing that kind of accompany that he would say, they come to me. And it's, you know, there's some truth behind that too. It's like, if you have this confidence and this, you know, this collection to yourself and that energy of, of attraction, yeah, things indeed do come. That I believe in wholeheartedly. I mean, I think, you know, law of attraction, manifestation, whatever you want to call it. Like I have supreme belief in myself and my ability to be successful in whatever I do. And I know that even when things are going horribly wrong, even when I have $11 in my bank account, (laughs) like the next thing is, no, I'm I'm serious. Like I've, I've I've been extremely rich. I've I've been been there. I've been extreme. Yeah. I've been, you know, I've, I've, I've been every peak and valley you can imagine. And I'm sure I will repeat the peaks and valleys for the rest of my life. That's life. Right. Yeah. But I always know I'm going to be okay. Like Mm -hmm. that underlying belief is within me that I think whatever you want to call it, that, irrational confidence will always lead me to getting back to where I need to yeah. be because you have to have I that. believe in myself. Yeah. You have to have that, dude. I, I tell that is a thing that comes with age because you do just totally. need the physical experience of being mm-hmm. rich and poor, rich and poor, rich and poor. You know, when you first don't have a lot of money, you're like, oh my God. You know, it's kind of like having your first, you know, partner, your first girlfriend uh, and losing that. And then you just think like, there's never going to be another girlfriend ever again. Absolutely. And the weight yep. of that breakup is so, and uh, you know, now Monumental. I'm kind of like, now I'm like, you know what? It was beautiful. I learned. And there will be someone that's even more suited to the next version of myself. That It's the same thing with money. It's the same thing with all this stuff. You take that lesson and apply it to every aspect of your life. And it, it, it just sort of mitigates the highs and lows, right? Like, yeah. My highs will never be as high and my lows will never be as low because I've been through this before. I know yes. what this experience is like. Yes. And that's yes. a super rewarding feeling knowing that when something goes horribly wrong, like, <laughs> whoa, I'm f***ed, yeah. it's going to be okay. <laughs> Dude, I've been there so many times. You know, I have this, yeah. this spiritual teacher, Peter Evans. You know, I don't, I don't talk to him as much as I'd like to, but he has taught me a lot of things. And one of the biggest things he taught me is I remember... Um, telling him about you know this, the breakup I was going through about a year ago and he would just say he's like stop stop because I would just be you know gushing to him a little bit about it and he's like you failed you failed you failed he just kept you know you failed you failed you failed I'm like what the f- why are you telling me this why like I didn't uh. he's like you need to be okay with the fact that something didn't go the way you expected if you mm-hmm. keep trying to fix something all the time instead of just acknowledging where you are you're never gonna even know what success tastes like because you're gonna keep yeah. thinking this thing is going to come from behind and f*** it all up. You need to be so okay with this feeling of quote-unquote failure or what is just what you didn't think was going to happen, right? So you got to get out of this like little loop. And, you know, again, same thing with money, relationships, whatever it is, you need to get out of this like dichotomy of success and failure so that you can yeah. just like just be with whatever it is because you need to stop mm-hmm. trying to think you can fix everything all the time, right? That mad rush to like make some money again. It's like, yo, you end up doing things you wouldn't have actually wanted to do in the first place just just chill with you yep. for a second just chill there you know you're the money will, will yeah. find its way to you and or you'll find mm-hmm. clarity to find the money again like don't go like rushing you know i, I kind of did that when i went back to new york the first time i was like i didn't you know what i wanted to do wasn't happening on the timeline i thought and i was kind of like running low on money and i was given an opportunity to go back to new york 
And it wasn't really what I wanted to do. And hell, I learned a lot. It was a beautiful experience. But I like kind of ran away. I kind of like ran back <laughs> home to do, like do this. And you know, I that it's. I wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't do that again. Let's just put it that way. You know, like that's the kind of yeah. experience of getting off that loop. So I'm mm -hmm. glad you're on that too, dude. Yeah, man. I, uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm a lucky person. I think that because Good. I believe strongly in, in myself that I am of the belief that everything's going to work out, right? Yeah. It may not work out how I expect it to or how I yeah. want it to. It will inevitably land in the place that it's supposed to be. Totally. So I don't question being told no. I don't question breakups i don't it, that's a young man's game right that, that it is. second guessing yourself ad nausea oh, yeah. is as what are you uh, like 20 28 30, 30. Oh, you're 30 <laughs> yeah. I, nah dude that's the best compliment i always get every time i shoot with these like young 22 23 year old models like oh are you like 28 i'm like yeah no yeah yeah, yeah no, that's me 28 yeah oh my god <laughs> do you do you uh do you feel like the older you get the younger you get does that make sense at all Mentally, yes. Physically, no. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no shit. Uh, no shit. As I, yeah. as I nurse my, my broken shoulders and hips. No, but dude, the yeah. older I get, it's like I keep thinking I'm supposed to feel my age mentally, mm -hmm. but yeah. I still feel like I'm 18 in my head, but I, mm, yeah, now, totally. now I'm 33. And it's like as that gap keeps getting wider and wider and wider, which is just making that feeling of where I am feel younger and younger and younger. And I kind of love it. I kind of, I feel like you know I'm going to be weird? a child when I'm 90. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I uh, I started taking pictures of myself every day, just like a selfie a day. Uh, you're doing to that? To document Thank the you. aging process because I don't think I'm looking old like I'm getting older, though. I think it's, you know, it's one of those things when you look at yourself every day in the mirror, the incremental aging is not yeah. perceptive. Yeah. And I'm having a hard time because I feel the same way. Mentally, I feel like I'm 20, right? Yeah. I do and say dumb shit on a regular basis like a 20-year-old. Physically, I feel my age. But mentally, <laughs> I still feel very much yeah. youthful. No, that's good. You know, you have to. You have to. I, uh, I recently got a red light, uh, incandescent red light bulb, infrared. Mm -hmm. And yeah, dude, I'm a, I'm a redhead. You know, I, I was the only redhead in my family. And I used to get tortured in the sun. I was, you know, yeah. like that idiot. Like my, my back and my shoulders are just covered in freckles. I, my face yeah. used to be covered in freckles. And then one day it just, I don't know, they all went away. But uh, I, I feel, I don't know, maybe it's the health decisions to be made, whatever. But, you know, I was home a couple months ago. My mom was like, your skin looks so good. Your skin, I, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It might just be the energy of doing things that are fulfilling. That's probably a big one. I think so too, man. I like... I don't know, like, I don't want to say I looked like worse like 10 years ago, but I definitely looked more stressed. Like, I carried For more sure. with me, whether it what, was... What were you doing 10 years ago? What was 28, 27-year-old I was working in construction. I, I was a, a, a vice president of sales for a, a construction company. I did that for five years up until, yeah. That's yeah. stressful. That's, that's stressful. Yeah. Is it? You know, it? it was... I don't know. Yeah, no, it, you know, good days, bad days, good weeks, bad weeks, good years, bad years. I think I wore it differently, right? Like, you know, I used yeah. to have deep under eye bags and I used to like you? break out a lot. And yeah. like, yeah, I, I, you know, I think because I carried stress in different ways, I, I, God bless whatever happened to me during the pandemic, because I don't, I don't get stressed anymore. Like I don't worry. Mm, love that. I'm not concerned, you know, whatever happens from this moment in time to the last day i'm on earth is a blessing i'm happy to be here i'm living yeah. the dream that i could only have hoped for myself and i don't worry anymore and i and again i i ask on my podcast all the time is that a fundamental aspect of age or life or what it was and i can't you know could i have learned these lessons and implemented them at a younger age i don't think i could have um but yeah i mean it's, I'm, not supposed I'm, to. i don't stress anymore yeah no i, I agree yeah all right like that's mm, yeah. That's kind of the wicked game we're all playing. It's mm. we're, we're meant to have, you know, I said it already and I you know, I have this just instilled in my mind constantly that we're all on this hero's journey. Right? Yeah. We're we're all meant to okay, like we we've maybe awoken slightly from the illusion of chaos and you know, we're looking from atop this hill on this, you know, what's this massive journey? You know, we got the, the river over there and the forest over there and the scary mountain over there. It's like we know this this great adventure awaits us and i that's kind of just what i've seen life to be at this point i mm -hmm. stopped you know when i was in my early 20s when i first came out to la i had this like vision of exactly what i was supposed to be doing the issue is that you become so attached to that 
and right so like every little everything seems like some weird detour that isn't supposed to happen yeah and you know up until that point i pretty much had every part of my life figured out right and everything kind of just went how i thought it was going to go and you know except for some injuries in college but other than that you know like to to have like a side quest so to speak it just was like why like what the fuck? like this isn't i don't i don't need this i don't care not only do you need it it's it's the very thing that the destination is trying to pull you through without you even knowing oh, yeah. and like that mm -hmm. you know and that that's that's a tough thing that you just need a lot of experience with in that whole game of destination versus the journey it's like your idea of this destination it has nothing to do with the destination yeah. like the whole point of that destination is just like a cowboy lassoing you and trying to pull you through all this other stuff that's actually the stuff that I know I actually want. And for you mm -hmm. too, it's like, did you think you were gonna be doing a podcast? Did you think you were gonna be doing photography? Did you think, right, like, dude, nope. did I think I was gonna be making brooches? Did I think I was gonna be even picking up a camera? You know what I mean? It's just what the yeah. fuck is life about? So I stopped caring. I stopped being like, you know, having any expectation. Yeah, you know what I, I've, I've found that I think through the comfort of where I am in my life, I'm not searching for external validation much anymore yeah. i mean I, I get caught in the instagram trap every now and yeah, then like we all do um, but for the most part i'm not looking for anything like i yeah. i know me i know what i want and i don't i'm not concerned or outwardly looking for something that i don't know what it is anymore because i think i've lived enough that i've checked enough boxes off that i yeah. am just so comfortable in my family my friends my career yeah. I'm not searching for validation. I'm not searching for anything outside of myself. Like I know my path. I know why I'm here. I, mm -hmm. I know those things. I, I don't, I don't search anymore. And I think that just has led to just even keeled. Like everything's yeah. good. It's, it's so you're not searching great. for things. You're not searching for things, yeah. but you are searching for a feeling. So what, what's the feeling? What, what is this ongoing feeling that you are searching for? Great question, man. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's the feeling when I take a picture. And uh, cool. I noticed it when I took a really good one uh, last week at the fashion show. I'm sure I'm going to experience it this week. I'm, I'm shooting uh, See Here Now for uh, the music festival in Asbury. Cool. Um, there's moments where uh, it's very weirdly everything sort of slows and I'm in the groove of working and taking mm -hmm. photos and and uh that's the feeling that i search for so and it's like a it's zone yeah yeah you know dude like i've had that moment where you're out at dinner and you're laughing with a bunch of friends and you're drinking good wine and you're having a good time and i and that's the feeling that i, I like to search for and, and yeah. replicate yeah. and same thing with having pizza dinners at my brother's house and you know all the kids are there and everybody's having yeah. fun and it's just chaos but it's amazing I love that. that like those are the like i i don't need you know, I'm sure I'll buy dumb shit in my life when I make millions of dollars. I'm sure I'll do it. I don't need it. It's just no. like a want thing. In life, the things that I want are experiences with the people that I love, my friends, my family, and that's it. Like, I just want to experience more life with more people and mm -hmm. have these kinds of conversations and create beautiful work. That's yeah. that's all I search for. Yeah. Is that feeling this the same within every... Like, is it is it the same? All right, so... The feeling I keep chasing is, mm -hmm. you know, in that like catharsis, that cathartic moment in a movie where your heart just totally drops and you like and you feel that moment of liberation in a character, whether it's like a, a music can give you that same like, you know, deep love gives you that same feeling. Like even when I, you know, when I had my puppy for all of six months, I would be walking him and I would just see this little dude. And I would put myself in this in this mental state of him being like 15 and like about to die, and I would just start crying. I'm like, the that the feeling of like weird catharsis or even grief because of the intense mountain of joy that I have experienced with whomever, whatever, like whatever it was, like that moment. And you know, I've gotten it in doing. MDMA and mushrooms, let's say, like I've, I've gotten it, <laughs> right? It's like, it's this, it's this true feeling of unconditional love, like whatever that frequency yeah. is, that like melting stomach bubbling out, like that moment, oh, I could chase that feeling all freaking day. And yeah, I think I that's it. the point of life, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. I, to get to, to whatever feels good to you, like, yeah. you know, 
for, it could be anything. You know, hopefully it's not, you know, something negative like murder, murder. murder. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, for Judas, some it is. No, for some, yeah, for you know some crazy people it is. But yeah, no, that's <laughs> you know not, what I'm saying. Like I, like yeah. I've, I've dialed into the wavelength of art and creation and conversation, mm-hmm. and. You know, I think I've found a, a a life path that works wholly for me. Doesn't totally. work for other people. Might not work for anyone else, but it works for me. Yeah. And if you could find that and just copy and paste for the rest of your life, I think you could probably lead a pretty happy life. That's it. That's it. You're. Uh, I'm trying to like get more. Just be like I'm on this a like, creative kick. So I guess I'm in participation mode big time right now. Mm-hmm. Like I'm painting, I'm writing, I'm doing this, oh, nice. and, you know, launching this this thing with this when it all, you know, gets going. And yeah, man, it's just like that, the the feeling of expression of that. It's like, I, I don't know the whole idea. I, I think we've talked about this on, on your podcast. Like if the tree fell and no one heard it, like did it fall? So like as an artist, as a creator, if you do this and no one else receives it, is is that like, I think people ask that question as if you can exist as only one side of that. It's like it's for me and it's for everyone else. Like I like it, it wouldn't mean as much to me. It would still be cool, but it wouldn't mean as much to me if like no one else experienced it. That's a very interesting point. Um, I do struggle with this because like I I the act of creating is so great to me, and then the uh, act of sharing feels so daunting to me. Mm, um, I really? think it's just my disenfranchisement with like social media in general. Like, yeah, I used to tweet dozens of times a day and I used to mm. like post on Instagram a million times a day. I've just fallen out of love with it. Right. And, I, and I'm sure it'll ebb and flow. And if I had a million followers, maybe it would, my, my interaction with it would change. But for me, yeah. the process of creation dramatically outweighs the desire to share i know i need to share i know it's part of my job of you know sharing the work that i have created with these wonderful human beings i just have in this moment in time completely fallen out of love with it can i let me me rephrase it for you can i rephrase that for you it's it's less about the act of sharing and more about the other person's experience of your expression okay like that thing like actual no no like i it's not it's like I, I get what you're saying. There's like a there's a weird energy of 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 chasing validation in the sharing part. I don't yeah. give a f- about that. It's the experience I get as someone who witnesses amazing art, like that feeling. I was t- like I get that feeling just observing someone else's expression, and that mm-hmm. like I now have formed like a metaphysical connection with this person that I have never even met through their expression. So like that feel like I want other people to have that feeling through. You know, it's a conversation. It's a dance between us. Like I like, yeah, it's daunting to share. I hear you hundred percent. But if you didn't have any part of it yourself, and you were just to pick the the photos, whatever it is, like for me, like I would love to make my films one day. Totally going to be a thing. Like if if I never even, I don't even want to see them. Right? It's not even. You know, it's like just making them was what all I needed. The watching mm-hmm. it is for all of you guys. And that's yeah. you know, and like that that feeling that I get when I made it, I can only hope. The experience that you have watching it that's cool like do you like that like would you like that if someone were to make a show for your photos and you didn't even have to go i mean yeah (laughs) i i don't know man like uh i care about very few people's uh impression of my work outside of like a very select few um present company included um there are people who inspire me that when they tell me that something that i've done is impressive to them or they appreciate or they think is beautiful that means the world to me yeah people i don't know i don't give a f- you know what i mean yeah, like no. i'm not no. yeah yeah it, it's a completely uh, yeah i'm not it's not the validation part yeah. not even at all i don't even care again if i never even yeah. heard their response i wouldn't care and, but there's also the have that yeah there's i mean there is a portion of me that is incredibly conceited and wants the world to see my sh- I mean, don't get me wrong. Sure. Like, obviously. You're human. You're human. I'm human. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, you know, I struggle only with that because to me, like, like I said, you know, I jokingly said about the podcast, like, yeah, I would love to reach millions of people with these conversations, but it's mm-hmm. not why I do it. But right. it's obviously in the back of my mind, like there could be that possibility. Yeah. And similarly with my photographs, like if it reaches a certain person who sees it and then opportunities afforded to me. It's why I'm doing it. It's yeah. not the initial reason, but 
it all plays a part. It's all yeah. There's layers to it, as as one would say. I know. Are you? Do you feel? Here's a personal question, and I hope you're as real with me as possible. Do you mm-hmm. like your photos enough to feel that you would be proud to show them off in a, in a large scale thing? Like it took me a long time to get to that yeah. point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that I am getting better every day. Sure. Um, sure. I think that some of my best photos I took three years ago and even better ones will happen three years from now. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I feel comfort in what I've done and what I will do to know that I would love to have a show one day. I would love to, you know, put a gallery together. Absolutely. Uh, the thing that really is important to me is that like the, that, possible outcome doesn't motivate me right i'm not in it for that totally it would be the most incredible opportunity of a lifetime but it's not what i'm working for um i'm like i have very small maybe not small big goals but like they're small for me and like the outside world like i just want to get the opportunity to get paid every day every single day to take a picture Mm -hmm. and that's a small goal like that's not huge. I, you know, I don't need to, like, I, I was talking to my mom about this uh, last week. I don't need to be a millionaire famous photographer. That doesn't no? motivate me. No, no, I don't. Okay. I mean, I, I would like to be, live a very comfortable life, monetarily speaking, that sure. I don't have to struggle financially. That is a great <laughs> possible benefit of, of working in the arts. It's not what motivates me. I don't necessarily need people to know my name. I don't necessarily people need people to know my work. Mm-hmm. I just would like the opportunity to do the things that I know I'm capable of doing. And yeah, I, I like artistically, expressionally speaking, I'm finding my voice more and more over time, which mm-hmm. is what I initially extremely, extremely struggled with. I think we talked about it the first time that we had our, you came on my podcast. Cause I said, I, I didn't know the look and feel of a photograph that was like, that was made by me. Mm. And I kept being, super unsure of what that was but now i like you know three years later i know that so yeah yeah no that's that's a good one that's a good i really appreciate you saying that it's not about the result of it you know i I, it's it's why i'm doing this it's why i'm doing i'm like i don't really there's all the stuff i want to do but it it feels more like it's part of my own personal purification process Mm -hmm. it's like i need to do this thing to almost like check it off my soul to do this say okay Mm -hmm. this was for me and i can't really do the next thing like these high level things i want to do it is a little bit of this linear ladder climb like i can't possibly have you know a thriving brand unless i know how to work with like one marketing person you know what I mean? It's like yeah. I have to like do all these little, you know, it's like I can't have a, a, you know, potentially Oscar winning film unless I, you know, make some short films for it. You know what I mean? Like who goes yeah. from nothing to, you know, this giant mountaintop? Like you do have this process to get to. And it's like, okay, I'm liberating myself as I go. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I agree and I disagree with that. If you want to shoot a feature film and you have an idea, like just f-ing do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's, there's no, nothing. For sure. You, I, I think a lot I think a big reason why people don't do things in life is like the thought of what it will or won't be is like paralyzing, right? Yeah. Like you can you can look at any number of great art films in history and they did it on a shoestring budget. You need a camera, you need people, you need a script, you need a story, and you can go sure. shoot. Sure. But what did they do before? I you know, here's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you shouldn't go for what you want. I guess what I'm saying is I'm someone that has been so manically curious about every part of a process that I don't know shit about making a giant feature film. Like I, like I need to like, plenty of people uh, didn't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I didn't know I, how to I shoot mean, a, a, I, I a New York fashion show until I did it last week. Yes, I'd never but, you, done but you've shot other stuff that led to that is my point. Yeah, you know, know. I mean, Scorsese so you. went to school, so is like, you. like Spielberg was like making films when he was six. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's a, you don't just go from something, you don't go from nothing to like, there is this, you do have to I, I, progress. I, I, do, I do want to push back against this because I don't think that in this day and age, there is anything limiting anyone's ability to do anything. Okay. I think we live in such a time that if you wanted to go shoot a movie next week and you have a story, you could do it. I don't sure. think you need to go PA on a film or assistant I'm not saying PA film. on a film. I'm not, no, definitely yeah, not saying PA. Yeah. 
No, I, I hear I you. Say, I, I appreciate yeah. you pushing on. I, I, pre, yeah. I, I am someone that does that. I tend to just go for things. I've also just noticed that I tend to need to understand the processes of things. Yeah. And that's, yeah, if I don't know, it's very hard for me to like operate without an understanding of something. So I, I tend to sure. like doing things on a small thing and then just keep going up. But yeah. yes, if I want to go make a film next week, I guess I, I would. Simple. Do it. Yeah. You fuck yeah. So then what's yeah. next for you, bud? What are you, you're just shooting this another show? Big. Um, yeah, so I'm, sh I'm, uh, there's a DJ group called Bob Moses. Um, it's a couple guys. Um, Bob and, Moses, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm sh Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm shooting them Saturday for See Here Now, um, which is awesome for me. I'm super excited. Um, I have an all-access artist pass, which this is what I'm really thrilled about, is I get to go back Sunday, and my favorite band of all time, Foo Fighters, is performing, and Hell I'm yeah. probably most likely Hell going yeah. to get an opportunity to photograph them. And to me, it's sort of like the goal, right? The the yeah. joke that like when I first started was, what do you want to do? I want to go be the Foo Fighters tour photographer or John Mayer's tour photographer. I mean, these are like heroes of mine and there's a very, you know, I don't know what the logistics and how everything's going to shape out on Sunday. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about the wreckage of the future, but for all intents and purposes, I'm going to get the chance to photograph them on Sunday. And that to me is like, pinch me. Holy sh amazing. Holy. Um, and then outside of this weekend, Whatever happens, I've got another shoot lined up for next Friday, uh, personal project, which I'm super, super excited about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, man, I'm like, you know, I, I fly by the seat of my pants. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't plan. I think life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. I think it's cliche, but it's true. It is true. What, I like, whatever I like happens, happens. Whatever comes next. I, uh, yeah. I am open and available to life to give me all of its blessings. That's what I say. You know. Is that is that your 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 message to everybody watching you right now? Is that? Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. dude. I think. I think. Yeah, man. I think when it what it boils down to is like I've, I've sort of created a life out of nothing. Like I literally, you know, three years ago got fired from a job. It was middle of pandemic. Like my yeah. life was in shambles. Um. I was broke. I was miserable. I was like, but my life was over. And mm -hmm. through therapy and, and a million other things of, of self-work, I've figured it out. That works for me. I'm, I've built a process. I've built a plan and I've built a life and it works. And now I'm open to everything that life has to offer me. If that includes going on tour with, with the Foo Fighters, yes. If that means Thanks. getting hired to, you know, Listen. if that means getting hired to go shoot a campaign in, in South Africa next that week. That would be sick. Yes. That, that would be you know sick. I, mean? I I I typically don't say no to things in life. I think life is you know some stuff that you need to experience and right? I I am open to all and any possibilities that life brings its way for me. You have to be. You have to be. I always mm -hmm. say take the left turn to people. You just have to take the left. everyone's always busy taking the right turn doing what they think they're supposed to do. Not a lot of people will be like, "All right, let me almost intentionally leave myself open or go in a direction I don't think my mind would typically allow me to make and just, yeah, yeah go that way. Like what's down that non trodden path. I think if you don't like internally feel open to the possibilities of life, you will close yourself off from possibilities, right? Completely. So if you don't believe that the experiences that you hope and dream for are possible, yeah. you won't have them. Right. So you have to believe that anything is possible and it can happen. Right. Yep. Like these mantras, affirmations, manifestations, whatever you want to call them, prayers, anything. I don't care what you call them. They work. Right. Like mm -hmm. I've literally built a life out of nothing. And it's just because I believed I was capable of doing it. It took a lot of hard work, a lot of headaches, a lot of drama, a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah. But I'm, you know, over time, I'm reaping the benefit of the belief in myself and what I can accomplish. I love that. I love that. All right, dude. Well, we have hit what feels like a really great time i don't really know what else i could possibly volley with you um yeah man i appreciate your time so much this is great this is like one of oh, the first times my of pleasure doing this. I'm, yeah i'm very very proud of you for starting this i'm excited oh. to see where it goes and uh, thank you buddy i uh i got a lot of faith in, in all of the awesome things you have to come thank I you appreciate it dude. all right well listeners this is uh mr johnny boy he's doing a lot amazing photographer i'll give you some some extra stuff in the i guess what do we call it comments section those you know yeah. captions notes below yeah notes below show notes yeah yeah <laughs> so i'm still figuring out how to even do all this stuff and uh yeah. yeah we'll do it again it'll be even better and smoother and uh and fun all right buddy 
Thanks for tuning in to another amazing episode of North of Chaos. If you loved it, and I'm sure you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell. You can also find links to all of our social media platforms down in the description below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook so you never miss an episode. We're all on this wild adventure together, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the episode. So drop a comment or a question in the comment section, and we'll keep this conversation going. So stay tuned for next week's episode. We launch one each and every week. So until then, stay weird and embrace the chaos.